Good morning, and welcome to today's Zoo to You at Stone Zoo. My name is Danya, and I am in our prehensile tailed porcupine exhibit today. And this is our little guy. He is the newest addition to our prehensile tailed porcupine family. It is confirmed he is a little boy. We recently did a test to test what sex he is. Um, and we do that by getting a quill um, that has fallen to the ground, just like hair that might fall out of our hair, um, out of our head. And we tested that quill to see if he was male or female. And he is officially a male. So hello, little boy, prehensile tailed porcupine. <laughs> And he is here because mom and dad, Prickles and Shadow, the prehensile tail porcupines, um, are part of a species survival plan. And what that is, that it's a program overseen uh, by the AZA, which is the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. And they help to manage populations of species who live in zoos and other establishments where you can see um, wild animals. Um, and this is a cooperative between all AZA zoos and experts in fields and on their species and, genet and genetic diversity. Um, and they ensure that we have healthy breeding and diverse genetics in zoos um, so that they are a biologically sound population. <laughs> and so these guys are native to South America. They are arboreal, which means that they live their entire lives up in trees. Um, they use those very nice claws to help them grip up in the trees, but even more so, he's kind of hiding it right now, their prehensile tails, which they use as a fifth limb in order to help them grip in trees. They can support their entire weight on that tail. It is very rare to see, um, but they can support their entire weight and hang upside down on that tail if they choose. Um, but our prehensile tail porcupines like to kind of just use it as a support. <laughs> um, they have very poor eyesight. Um, they have just little tiny pinprick eyes that let in very little light. And the reason for that is because they are nocturnal. So these guys take lots of naps during the day and are very, very active at night. Um, so keepers will kind of see them napping throughout the day. And if you're here seeing them on exhibit, you'll see them kind of um, taking lots of snoozes. But as soon as the lights turn off, they are having a party in here. They love to be awake at night. <laughs> um, they uh, um, just got their breakfast, and so they are herbivores, and they eat lots of different greens in the wild. Um, they would eat lots of leaves and, and fruits and small vegetables that you would find in the trees. But here at the zoo, they eat lots of sweet potato, which are the favorite of the entire family. Prickles, Shadow, and this new baby boy, their favorite food is sweet potato. Um, but they also will eat apple and greens and little biscuits. And their entire body is covered in those beautiful quills. And so the variation of color in those quills um, varies from a very, very dark brown to black or to a very white or yellow. And so there definitely is some light and dark together, but the variation of that can um, vary depending on the porcupine. So our little boy here definitely is very dark, dark black and light white. <laughs> but those quills, cannot shoot out of their body. So even though um, it is rumored that they can shoot their quills, their quills are just modified hairs. So just like the hair that covers your head um, and you cannot shoot that hair out of your head, they cannot shoot the quills out of their backs or surrounding their body. Um, when they do feel threatened, they can stick all those quills up on an end and that makes it so that they stick up so that if an animal does come and try to hurt them or harm them, that they tend to get quilled, um, but they don't actually shoot out of their bodies. 
Um, their entire body is covered in those beautiful quills. Um, only their little noses, those big, I should say big noses for their bodies, um, the palms of their feet and their tail um, are lacking some of those really hard quills, although they are covered in a peach fuzzy type fur. Mm -hmm. um, and so our little boy here was born in July, um, and so he is about four months old. Um, he was born, oh, excuse me, he was born in June, June 25th. <laughs> Um, and he was born with a reddish orange hair. So he looked very, very different when he was born. Um, and he is born with that reddish orange um, hair. And that is not as prickly as you see here. Um, when they are born, that hair is a lot softer. And it's coarse, kind of like horse hair. Um, but it is so that he does not prick mom um, when he is being born or that he does not prick mom when he is starting off um, nursing. And so it takes about a week for those spines to harden, um, but they do nurse for about three months. So he is getting um, to be towards the end of his nursing stage. Um, he is a singleton. Um, babies, porcupines, um, only tend to be born once, one at a time. And baby porcupines are also called porcupets. <laughs> very, very cute. Um, they reach about adult size in one year and reach sexual maturity in less than two years. But their parents, Prickles and Shadow, um, they are 10 and 8 years old. And so they are part of that species survival plan that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, and they have been together for quite a number of years and they have had three beautiful babies together. But Prickles um, came to us from a different zoo and Shadow was born here. And so that makes sure that our genetic diversity is really varied, um, so that we're having very, very healthy populations. And so if you come to the zoo, you will see on many of our signs at the very bottom, it will say either species survival plan or you'll see a rhinoceros. And that shows that um, that animal in that exhibit is part of a plan for breeding, even though they might not be actively breeding, um, that their genetics are part of a program in order to create healthy individuals so we can have healthy, healthy populations in zoos. <laughs> Um, Prehensile-tailed porcupines are not endangered or threatened, um, but they are under pressure by habitat loss um, and unfortunately are killed by hunters as prey and for meat. Um, and so the SSP um, helps to have good biodiversity in zoos to potentially help um, populations in the wild if they need it. But at this time, they do not. <laughs> they are doing quite all right in the wild. And again, that is in South America. Um, so you will not see these porcupines um, anywhere around our neighborhood. The porcupines you might see um, in the Northeast would be North American porcupines, um, which are closely related. Um, and they are a, two species of New World porcupines. And New World porcupines are very, very unique in that their quills have developed a barb. And so you might not be able to see it, but on every single one of those quills are very microscopic barbs. So that when they do poke into a predator, even though they don't have a whole lot of predators, when they do poke into that predator, it is very, very hard to get out. And so they can be very dangerous. Um, and so the new world porcupines are very unique in that way, um, where the old world porcupines, porcupines that are still living in Africa and Asia and Europe, um, they do not have barbs on their quills. So our North American and prehensile tailed are very, very cool and can defend themselves very, very well. Do we have any questions yet? So I used to have a hedgehog back in the day, and I was able to pet my hedgehog and go down his quills. Can I pet a porcupine down their quills? So we 
are very hands off with our porcupines, although Shadow does come out for programs and things and I help to train him. Um, I do not touch Shadow. He is very prickly and he does not prefer to be touched or pet. Um, even though they are really used to humans um, and we feed them and interact with them often, we make sure that we give them a healthy amount of respect and give them a healthy amount of space because they are wild animals. They are not pets. Um, or a hedgehog could be your pet. Um, we just want to make sure we respect that they are wild animals. Awesome. And we can't resist this really nice nose that this baby <laughs> porcupine is showing. Why are those big noses so important for them? So because they are nocturnal, they use a lot of other senses besides sight when they are trying to maneuver around the trees and find food. So like I said, they have very poor eyesight, so they use that big nose to help them smell around. They have an incredible sense of smell, and also it might be a little hard to see on camera, but they have very, very long, wide whiskers. And in addition to those whiskers on their face, they have what's known as guard hairs around their entire body. So they stick out around their legs, around their backs, and those are like whiskers around their entire bodies to help feel around them when they cannot see. And their nose helps them smell around them when they cannot see in the dark. They also have a decent amount of hearing as well. They have little he ears hidden in those quills and so they can hear their surroundings to make sure that they can stay nice and safe from predators and find their food and trees that they would like to sleep in. Awesome. And then can you just remind us for those who are just joining us, remind us who we are looking at? So this is our baby porky pet that was born June 25th. He is the newest member to our prehensile-tailed porcupine family. He is the offspring of Prickles and Shadow, who you will be able to see on exhibit here at the Stone Zoo. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for joining us in our prehensile-tailed porcupine exhibit and talk today. Um, and I hope to see you again soon.